I'm Ruth Essex, I'm freelance arts and regeneration consultant um, and I've done a lot of work in using spaces and using uh, uh, in high streets and city centres and particularly integrating that work with artists and, and creatives and helping creatives drive regeneration and come up with the ideas um, instead of sort of committee meetings. Um, I've been brought into uh, Bedminster Town Team um, th through George. He just kept, he asked me to come and help develop a project that, that the, the town team had, had sort of had decided they wanted to do something, um, and I've been brought in to just try and raise the money um, and develop the project into something that's viable and doable. Um, it's called Coming Out of the Walls. Um, and basically, it's it's a development on from, from what from what the town team have learned already from the various uh, activity that you've already heard about, um, <coughs> particularly um, particularly building on the beautiful bugs project uh, project um, that Steve outlined, um, which which um, as he said drew a lot of attention to the area and also developed a lot of expertise in the team around the practicalities of making stuff and then putting stuff on walls which sounds good at first but can be quite um, can be quite problematic and, and, and there, there are technical issues around that um, so the bugs project was intended as a temporary was it one year yeah yeah so it's a temporary temporary project um, this project is a bit more ambitious it's um, it's to develop more permanent artworks for for the high street areas um, and just, I think, I think the town team had looked at what the street scene that they had, and then they sort of saw we've got a lot of walls, um, we've got a lot of amazing um, 2D artwork um, that, that Upfest has been developing over the last six years, and there's a trail of art, artist work around the area. Um, why don't we try and develop more 3D art? So, so sculptural stuff, um, rather than being on the ground. Um, um, actually coming out of the buildings and the shops, so um, it's currently not funded. Um, we've got a, so I, I don't really feel that comfortable talking too much about it. But um, the town team have put in some money, which is this this model you were referring to earlier, to have a bit of money up front to, to prime project uh, project development. Um, and we've currently got a, a funding proposal into the Arts Council England to, to um, and then. Uh, the other bit of funding will come through landlords and building property owners. We'll expect them to put in a percentage into this project and partner with artists. Um, so with this project, we like we 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 mentioned that Bedminster is a very diverse area. It's more like a town um, than, than a neighbourhood, um, and this and and the, the disparity really between between wealth and um, and sort of vibrancy. Um, I'm not sure whether I pulled this photo off the internet last night. I'm not sure how recent it is. It doesn't paint a particularly great picture of the area. Um, we all know there's great stuff going on, but we know that there's there's a lot of work to do. Um, so it's it's this type of area that we we are going to focus on um, the project um, using using spaces like these above the shops. Um, I think. Some of the inspiration for this project um, was from um, Camden in particular, where there's, there's been quite a large usage of these sort of 3D sculptures on buildings um, to, to change the visual appearance um, of the streetscape. Um, I know George is, is quite inspired by this. I, but, but what we want to do, this, this, is, this is very linked to advertising and, and particular products of the shops. Um, and what we'd like to do here is, is move very much beyond that and commission artists not to not to, to build adverts but to um, look at the history and, and the sort of social character of the area and come up with um, with uh, sculptures and structures that reflect the area more broadly than just the particular um, particularly selling the products in the shops um, I'm more inspired by stuff like this um, this is, for people who don't know, this is the Headington shark that um, sort of appeared overnight in 1986, I think, um, in a town near Oxford. 
Um, and and this, was, this was totally instigated by the owner of the house, who's quite a character, really. Um, and he, he commissioned an artist to do this. Um, and I think it was an act to, to, to show his anger against uh, nuclear weapons. Um, so that was his bit. Um, so this, this started off as a very controversial act um, and was immediately um, jumped on by the local council. Um, firstly, they went for the sort of health and safety element um, and after inspecting it, realised it was totally solid and wasn't going anywhere or falling on anyone. And then they went uh, down the planning permission uh, route and um, successfully um, claimed that he didn't have planning permission, which clearly he didn't. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, and when he applied for a uh, uh, retrospective permission, they, they denied it. Um, but the, the shark, meanwhile, it's, it's stayed in this rooftop and gained quite a lot of uh, love from the local residents. So um, he, he eventually won the right to keep it um, after appealing to central government, who then, then backed it and overthrew the council decision. But I think what we're seeing is something that at the time sort of was, was kind of radical and nonsensical to, to a sort of like a, a planning and very much very sort of traditional street, streetscape type of approach. But over time it's become it's become an landmark. So I, I see this as something that we're we kind of inspired by and we're aiming for. Um, just, <laughs> these are just some other examples of what sort of the vision of, of what I think we should be going for with this project. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to get that, but this is, <laughs> this is the work of an uh, artist called Alice Martin, who does these fantastic uh, uh, interventions using obviously hundreds of thousands of books, which just pour out of buildings. And she's done this installation in sort of high streets um, around the world. Um, this is another great, great image of, of, of sort of the work of a visual artist in, in a high street. Um, this is in Istanbul. I think there's, how many chairs are written? Uh, 1,550 chairs in that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is currently, uh, this, is, this is existing at the moment, it's in Margate. Um, and it's, <coughs> it's a building that got CPO'd, uh, compulsory purchased by Margate Council and they, they had sort of no intention of, of doing anything with it for a while. Um, and in the meantime, an artist who'd always dreamed of doing a sliding building type uh, installation had approached them. Um, he raised most of the money, and um, this is an installation in Margate that you, I think it went in a few months ago, that will be, um, be there for a year. Um, again, it's caused a massive stir, and, and it's this thing that we've been looking at is it's about uh, increasing footfall to an area and, and, and the potential of, of these types of interventions to do that. Um, so, so I think one of the one of the guiding principles around this project will be um, sort of acts of playfulness. Um, I think playfulness is very engaging um, type type of approach and, and something that. Um, it would be good to um, encourage the artist to do in this project um, because because most people can relate to something that's playful and funny and um, and there's a, there's a lot of art out there that's quite serious but in a high street situation it's nice to sort of encourage a, 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 a kind of humour and, and, and playfulness around what we're doing um, and, and this is something else the sort of thing we, we might be looking at um, Again, this is another. This is this. This is a building in Berlin that I've been to. Well, I think the residents did this themselves, probably without planning permission as well. Um, and they put loads of baboons all over the front of the building. Again, it's it's um, it's very <coughs> engaging type of artwork. Um, so, so the idea of the project is firstly to try and beautify and visually um, improve the street. Um, and, and make it more interesting space to be and, and, and to do all those things that the high street aims to do to, to draw more people into the area, to increase dwelling time 
and to give it some um, unique characteristics. Um, the other part of the side of the project is, to, is artist development, um, and particularly to try and give artists um, roots into public art work, because it's a very difficult area of the arts world for, for many artists to access. Um, there's, there's a perception from artists that it's, it's a bit of a done deal, and, and it's very hard to go for arts commissions um, if you don't have a huge, uh, a huge amount of experience or a large portfolio of having done that before. Um, but, but Bristol in the South West is home to, uh, to a lot of artists, um, a lot of street artists who, uh, who are used to have a lot of expertise in, uh, in uh, intervening in streetscape. And also it's home to a lot of um, set builders and designers and, and people who work building festival infrastructure that have got incredible skills in terms of design and build. Um, so these are the sort of projects that we've seen around Bristol that I think will try and support local artists to go for these sort of commissions. The commissions um, will be between five and ten thousand pounds each. Um, and we will also provide support to the artists in terms of them moving on with this project and, and, and moving into the world of, of public art. Particularly for, for, for set designers and, and people who work in festivals, they, their year are very heavily weighted, so there's a lot of work in the summer, but they have a very big downtime in the winter. So I think we're trying to sort of widen the opportunities for their, for their livelihoods. Um, this is a piece of work in Bristol. It's a, a light, bar, light box piece. It's a Bobby Tyler lyric um, over an old police station. Um, and again, this was, done, this was done off the artist's own back, but we'd like to support artists like this to, to, do, to do stuff in a more official capacity as well. If that's what they want. Um, <coughs> this is another. This this is a piece of work on um, people see as they enter Bristol now. Again, it wasn't it wasn't commissioned as a sort of as a very traditional uh, uh, public art commission. It was a much more informal, um, accessible way of, of, of commissioning artists' work, um, and and quite an efficient way of, of of creating sculpture in the in the public realm. <coughs> Um, this is a piece of work by a local artist <coughs> called Filthy Luca, um, and he's and again the sort of artist we try and encourage to come along and work with us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of stuff like this. Yeah. Again, yeah. you know, someone with an eye for, for something, and and, there, and someone who will actually <coughs> act upon that and do it. Um, which these these little interventions make all the difference um, in in the way people. Uh, people feel about, about their surroundings. Um, and, and set builders, we've, we've got, uh, you can't really see the set, the, the image isn't that good, but across the back there, there's all these elaborate sets that are built um, by a local circus company, um, their carpenters, um, called the Invisible Circus. So we've got all this expertise. Most of their work will, will go into festivals around the country, but we, they, they don't necessarily show their work. Um, in our city, where, where, they, where they live. Um, again, this is more set building. Um, this was last year's Glastonbury. Um, for anyone who might have been there, this is an area called Shangri-La, which again utilises some incredible uh, set building skills. Many of these people are, are living and work in the South uh, West. Um, more examples of set building. Um, this is how elaborate it's getting. So this just went up for four days, um, and it, it, um, they created a, I think it was a, I don't know what the capacity, but they created quite, quite a large venue at Glastonbury, just for those four days. Um, and this, this is built by um, a local arts organisation called Arcadia. Um, some of you may have seen, they build these ginormous um, sculptures made out of scrap metal. Um, that, are, uh, that, that move, um, and they specialise very much in building um, event, event, elaborate event environments um, using scrap metal, but they're also locally based, and they, their work goes out of the city and all around the place, as well as world renowned, but they don't, they don't have an in-route into the world of public art and, and putting stuff around the city. This is the sort of stuff they've done, and they set fire to a lot of things as well. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that sort of summarises what we're, we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Yeah.